I wanted to talk about uh, our Monday council meeting here in the town of Orangeville. Town Council agreed to assist uh, our residents and small businesses, uh, all, all businesses in Orangeville, by waiving penalties and interest on property taxes, uh, water, and hydro bills. So those who are in uh, difficult circumstances uh, will not be penalized if they're not able to make payments on all of those items. We've also uh, made our public transit system free. A, a couple of reasons for that. One, uh, by uh, boarding the buses on, at the rear door uh, would uh, re remove some of the interaction for our drivers. Uh, also, uh, we, we need to get people around town and, and this is uh, a way to help uh, our residents um, uh, get out to make their essential purchases if they do not have transportation other than public transit. Uh, on, the, on the provincial, uh, sorry, uh, with respect to Dufferin County, uh, both Orangeville at uh, orangeville.ca and Dufferin County at dufferincounty.ca have excellent um, website uh, information regarding uh, COVID-19, including health uh, items as well as the incentives that are being offered uh, for uh, both municipalities. As, as we know, Premier Ford uh, announced uh, a package of $304 million uh, last week that money went to specifically to healthcare. And around the time we're gonna end our meeting today, the Minister of Finance for the province is gonna be giving an economic statement. So I would imagine there might be some additional assistance or stimulus in that, uh, in that statement. Um, it was interesting last night that the United States uh, announced a, a huge uh, stimulus package was approved, uh, $2 trillion. Um, you know, doing the math on that, that that's uh, six thousand dollars per man, woman, and child in the United States. Uh, reading through the information, though, we find that uh, there was eight hundred and fifty billion dollars in loans, um, two hundred and fifty billion dollars in uh, EI. Uh, so that's not not new money. I would think that the two hundred fifty billion was probably out of uh, EI funds that, that uh, the, the uh, government had. So there is a, some additional new money. I think all of the details will be uh, coming uh, into play in the next couple of days. So with that uh, recap, uh, I just uh, wanted to start off with our member of parliament, uh, Mr. Seaback. So Kyle, I wonder if you can give us a, a recap of the federal government, uh, what, what the federal government is proposing for small business um, just, we're all wondering what the country can afford. Mr. Trudeau has started, uh, stated that uh, the country is in excellent financial shape in comparison to many other countries. Uh, is that true? And uh, can the country support a larger stimulus package than what has been offered? Um, my concern and that of many uh, others is the speed with which the financial assistance can get into the hands of Canadians. We're hoping uh, you can shed some light on that mechanism and uh, what your thoughts are about how the federal government has been performing to this point. Mr. Seaback. Uh, thanks, uh, thanks, Sandy. So there's a whole lot of things that the federal government has announced recently. Last night, there was a big, uh, big piece of legislation passed with $82 billion worth of funding that's going to go out to help support Canadians. Uh, in, in general, I do have the sense that the government is moving a little too slowly on these things and I wish they would be moving faster both with respect to a whole bunch of things. Uh, the government's recently announced that now people coming into Canada will be mandatorily quarantined for 14 days. Um, I think they were a little slow on that. I wish they would have had some mandatory quarantine procedures in place a little bit earlier in the last three weeks i think a million canadians have returned from abroad uh, with virtually no screening and i think that was a big uh i think the federal government dropped the ball on that with respect to the funding that was announced last night i'm going to start with that because it's the it's the biggest change from what's happened so we um now have a new canada emergency response benefit that's been announced tonight you're going to be able to access this through your uh, your My CRA account, which a lot of us have through our bank accounts. I know I do. I can log into My CRA account by going into my financial, uh, going to the CRA website and logging in through my financial institution. So you can also access it through My Service Canada. So here's what this is going to do for individuals, because I'm going to start there. Um, it's going to provide a taxable benefit of $2,000 a month for four months. 
Now, this is basically going to be for anyone that has earned up to $5,000 or more of income in the past year, you are going to be eligible. This is a big change from the EI provisions that the government announced earlier on, which uh, was going to allow you to qualify for EI if you had uh, if you're self-quarantining or you were taking care of someone. So this is going to be for everyone. So if you are a sole proprietor uh, and uh, you've earned up to $5,000 worth of income in the last 12 months, you're going to be able to qualify for this benefit. And I know I've had a lot of emails and telephone calls from people who have small businesses, whether they're massage therapists or you know various professions, uh, they will qualify for this. Now, how you qualify is not 100% set up by the government yet. What I'm being told, and remember this was just passed last night, uh, is that this will be available in the first week of April. Again, I know it's moving slowly and people are concerned, but that money is going to be there. You're gonna be able to apply for it uh, in the first week of April. So that's something that is going to be almost universally applied. The only areas that I see we have some challenges with that are going to be perhaps students who have just graduated and therefore may not have uh, earned $5,000 worth of income in the last 12 months. Um, so those people are maybe falling through the gap on this and I think the government is going to have to take a look at how they're going to address the people that are going to have those kinds of concerns. But by and large, I think this is going to be a very good measure for Canadians and I, I commend the government for doing that. Um, with respect to small business, uh, there have been a few things that have been announced. Uh, I'm not convinced, uh, quite frankly, that um, they are going to be si uh, significant enough for a small business. So the first thing that we've talked about with uh, small business is that they are going to be eligible for um, a, a wage subsidy for a period of three months. The subsidy will be equal to 10% of remuneration paid during that period up to a maximum of $1,375 per employee and $25,000 per employer. Uh, I think the wage subsidy should be higher because 10% is not going to be enough for a lot of small businesses. So I'm, I'm really hoping that the government is going to make some movement on that. Um, the other thing you're doing is there's flexibility on filing your taxes for businesses. So all businesses can defer until after August 31st, the payment of any income tax amounts that become owing uh, on or after today and before September of 2020. So businesses, you can hold on to some of those cash because most businesses make those payments in quarterly installments. So I think that's going to that's going to help business out a little bit as well. Um, on the other stuff, uh, I want to briefly sort of talk about uh, for individuals as well. The tax filing date has been deferred until June 1st. Uh, that's great for people that maybe owe money on their taxes, but I would encourage everyone who is expecting any kind of a tax refund, uh, they should be getting their taxes in as soon as possible because, again, that's going to allow you to have some money that comes back into your bank account. All interest and penalties will be waived for people who are um, uh, filing their taxes late, even if they even if they owe some money. So I think those are some good steps as well. Um, I'm just trying to go through all my notes because there's there's a significant amount. Uh, one other thing I do want to talk about is that the government's also bringing in some more supports for individuals, a one-time special payment by early March of 2020 through the goods and services tax credit. Uh, this will double the maximum annual goods and uh, services tax credit amounts for the 2019-2020 benefit year. This will be about $400 for individuals, $600 for couples. And they're also going to increase the um, uh, Canadian child care benefit, uh, the Canada child benefit amounts. So um, that's going to increase by a maximum of $300 per child. So the overall increase for families receiving the CCB will be approximately $550 on average. So the government is certainly doing some, taking some steps and I'm looking through my notes again. There's going to be a six-month interest-free moratorium on repayment of Canada student loans uh, for individuals and also reducing the required minimum withdrawals from RRIFs by 25% for 2020. So there's a whole host of financial supports that are being offered by the government right now. 
I'm posting all of these on my website as well, kylesebach.ca, uh, including links on how you can apply for the various benefits. If anyone's having a challenge uh, applying for these benefits, uh, please get in touch with my office. And you know, email is certainly the fastest way that we respond, and that is kyle.seebach uh, at parl.gc.ca. That's a quick summary of everything that we've got right now, uh, Sandy. And uh, I again stress, I think we need more support for small business. I've heard and received lots of uh, calls from small business, certainly heard from CFIB as well. Um, the longer we can keep people employed, the better we're going to do to survive any downturn that's coming as a result of this. I just want to point out that one of the things that was passed as well is that um, there's going to be a business credit availability program through BDC um, that's going to provide uh, $10 billion that businesses can apply for. I don't know what the application process exactly is going to be for businesses, but the government is adding a lot more liquidity through BDC and, and Export Development Canada, EDC, for medium and small businesses. And once I have all of those details as well, I want to make sure small businesses know how to access those through my website. So it's it's I don't know how how quickly people can access it or how much they can apply for, but the government is giving some additional loan products uh, for small business. Just wanted to quickly add a couple of final thoughts here for everyone. Number one, um, we have federally approved uh, temporary foreign workers in the farming sector to still be able to come and help farmers during the growing season. I know we have a lot of uh, farmers in Dufferin Caledon, so uh, they will be subjected to a mandatory 14-day quarantine when they arrive in case they are uh, symptomatic for COVID-19, but we are still going to process temporary foreign worker applications uh, in the farming sector. And just with respect to myself and my office, the office is closed to walk in traffic, but we are serving constituents both uh, by email and by telephone. Phone numbers 519-941-1832. And I said my email address before, kyle.seback at parl.gc.ca. All of our contacts on my website, we're here, my staff and I, to help in any way we can. We're trying to have a service standard right now of returning phone calls and emails within 24 hours. We are getting an incredibly high volume, so I'm just asking people, please be patient. We will absolutely get back to you and try and help you in any way we can. Um, I hope that everybody keeps a stiff upper lip through this. Uh, we got some excellent, excellent commentary today with some great advice from some very experienced people. And again, I want to thank everybody that was involved today. Particularly want to thank our IT department here at the town of Orangeville for putting this together. I think, uh, hope it, hope the broadcast went okay. It certainly will be uh, rebroadcast on YouTube for others to watch in, uh, in the near future. Thank you so much and uh, we'll sign off now. Thank you.